I mean, housing is one of the most important things in people's lives. If we can somehow, through open source and wide collaboration, solve that, um, I think we'll have done a big deal altogether to uh, make things better. You're listening to The Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. It is July 2016, and today we have a very special treat for you in the spirit of the open source solutions that I'm often promoting here at CorbettReport.com as a key and integral part of the way forward, finding solutions and answers to the problems rather than simply dwelling on the problems themselves. And today we're going to be talking to a tag team, a husband and wife tag team of Marcin Jakubowski and Katarina Moda. And longtime Corbett reporters will remember, I hope, March and Jakubowski from episode 222 of my flagship podcast, where we talked about lessons in resistance open source, and I highlighted his presentation, his 2011 presentation, uh, TED Talk, talking about the global village construction set and open source ecology. Uh, Corbett reporters with a short-term memory will remember Marchin from my very much more recent reference to open source ecology in the open source solutions video that I did just a few weeks ago. Um, both of those links will be in the pod, the show notes for this video if you need them. And uh, Katarina Moda will be new to Corbett reporters, so we'll uh, introduce her and her idea, uh, open the Open Building Institute, which uh, perhaps is the other piece of the puzzle or the next step of the open source ecology idea, but I'll let them explain that uh, for, for you guys out there. So first of all, thank you very much for coming on the program. And uh, Katarina Marchin, perhaps you can explain how the Open Building Institute came about. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you for having us. You want, okay, Take um, it away. <laughs> okay, so the Open Building Institute is a relatively new project uh, we just launched, but it's been in the work for a few years. Uh, it's actually been in the work for about a decade, but if you want to keep it short, um, I think that it started to take shape uh, two years ago, or approximately two years ago, when uh, Martin and I got married and we moved to his farm in rural Missouri and realized that the house we had here was too small for two people. So we had a few requirements as to what kind of house we wanted. We wanted to be able to expand as we grow rather than having to choose between a very small house that will stay small forever or a huge house that would get us in debt for the rest of our lives. We wanted to be able to use uh, local materials. We wanted to, for the building to be as sustainable as possible. We wanted it to be affordable. So what we quickly learned by looking around a little bit was that there wasn't one solution that addressed all of these things in one go. So mm -hmm. that's how we started building our own house uh, using these principles and experimenting with different techniques and approaches to see if we could make it work. Uh, two years later, we actually built a few um, structures here, including our house that has an attached aquaponic greenhouse. One of our goals is also to be able to produce our own food, to use as much solar energy as we possibly can, preferably passive solar, um, water catchment, all, all of that. And at one point throughout all this, we realized, well, we're probably not the only people in the world that have this problem. So that's when the Open Building Institute actually started to be, become more of a thing. And uh, we've been working for the past um, six months, more than six months actually, into taking our own experience and translating it into a toolkit, into a system that others can use, not just us. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Right. So, um, toolkit. Let's see. Is that kind of framing the problem? Do you want to ask any questions before we go further mm -hmm. or should we continue? You can continue. I have questions if you want, but I, you can continue along yeah. the track. Well, I mean, just to summarize, you know, we're talking about the big issue. And of course, under that issue is the whole political economy or the whole politics of housing, which revolves around land access, which we're not going to touch right now. We're just talking about the good product, which we think is could be an in to many more people having that. But what is that product? I mean, just, just to clarify that. Right now we're talking about building a 700 square foot structure loaded with ecological features in five days for under $25,000 in materials. So over the years we've been developing this modular building technique system which allows us, we call this extreme manufacturing, um, it's a term we've coined a few years ago, 
But by using parallel builds, module-based design, where many people work in parallel to build the modules and then assemble them rapidly into place, that's the kind of technique we're, we're using. And of course, by using open source, bringing in a lot of subject matter expertise to have the best practices, we can do a very low-cost house in an extremely short period of time. The way we're trying to address the labor issue, we've, we've run a lot of different workshops here, training, immersion, workshops, and we found that we can get a large group of people to do this and actually pay us to get an immersion learning experience. So in this model that we're trying to roll out to the world, our goal is to train people who could do that in other locations. We can do that here, and we have our first build coming up of the complete house and greenhouse coming up in November. Our next build, really. Next we have set of, a few builds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've had a number of builds. We're building this upon actually, you can say, 12 different builds at Factory Farm here in Missouri, mm -hmm. and we're putting those learnings together. So we've learned how to build things fast and efficiently, such that the labor part, which is in construction, is half the, half the cost, that's pretty much addressed and, and eliminated and, and turn, in fact, turned upside down to a revenue-generating opportunity where people learn and we produce a solid object at the end of the day. All right. So, so just to clarify, then the uh, the immediate goal here, obviously, is to build the, uh, the the housing, affordable, open source, modular, ecological housing. Um, Twenty five thousand dollars of materials and resources in under five days an incredible feat. Um, but the long term goal is to expand this into other types of modular building, schools, offices, greenhouses, barns. Everything. 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 Okay. So basically. Uh, what what we actually failed to mention is that at the core of this system is a library of modules that you can assemble, you can use to design a house using open source uh, software. So the idea is to put out there not just a, a specific house model, but a set of tools to enable everyone else to design not the house that we design, but the house that they want. And all of this free, open source, and based on free, uh, a free an open source tool chain. So open source software, all of that. So this, the place where we are right now is the transition from the experimental period into the replication period. What does it take to actually make this work for everyone else? Mm -hmm. And modular refers to when we talk about the designs we provide. So when we try to put together the 700 square foot seed home, which we call the house that expands as you grow, so you don't get into the debt issue. Uh, people immediately started commenting, hey, what about this? The bathroom should be right next to this, to the bedroom, this and that. So we said, hey, okay, there's an infinite number of different houses that probably we will have to make at the end of the day because people have, there's so many people on the planet. So while we will produce a certain model, we allow the the mod complete modification using the set, using open source software, specifically Sweet Home 3D which is an open source software that we're using, and you download the modules and then you can design. So the person uh, basically designs the entire thing, can br bring it all together, get the materials and resources, and put it together themselves, at least theoretically, using tools that they make themselves from the open source ecology toolkit, right? Yeah, that's, that's correct. And the, the feature about that is uh, you can download, download everything and play with that. It's... Uh, designed to be plug and play as much as possible. Well, then let's talk about the open source ecology input into this, um, because uh, again, I'm sure my long term listeners will remember open source ecology in the global village construction set, your quest to make 50 of the most common, uh, commonly available tools, uh, uh, really available through open source uh, modular collaborative effort. And uh, I haven't checked the update recently. Uh, how far are you in the progress towards those 50 tools? And uh, how, how is that going to play into the Open Building Institute? Altogether, there's uh, about 16 different prototypes that have been built, and there's about seven replications in 12, or two dozen replications in seven countries around the world. The brick press has been the most most popular one. There's 12 different replications around the world. A couple of people right now I, I know that are building houses with it. We've seen, for example, a replication in Nicaragua where they built a whole brick production facility, so that's pretty good. But as far as uh, the replication is, is the part that's missing, like like a dozen brick presses is not viral. You know, when, when we first published the plans, I thought, okay, this is going to go viral because it's a machine you can build for 5,000 materials while it would cost you about 50,000 for the, the, the official off-the-market version. So 
No, that hasn't happened. So the next step is the housing project in the sense that we can apply all these machines. You've got your tractor, your brick press, your sawmill, your concrete mixer, backhoe, trencher, all those different machines that can go into that, plus the machines that make the machines like the CNC torch table for cutting out all the metal so you can digitally produce these things. That's, that's our key to building fast. You have pre-cut parts that are exact using digital fabrication to allow you to do this really fast. So this is the culmination of, of all the work and applying both the machines and the extreme build methods to the field of housing. And that's, that's basically where we're at. And for the two, next two years, we'll be focusing on that. Now, open source ecology continues to go forward. Our 20-year roadmap is still there. I can actually send you the link to our 20-year roadmap, which culminates with the open source economy. What's that mean? It's that anyone has a realistic choice to, to be in a different parallel system of economics and so forth based on a true open source collaboration paradigm instead of the proprietary development. So that's still out there and joining Katarina. I see where the, this project goes. It's, it's uh, quite exciting yeah. to see. I think that maybe uh, one way of putting this, correct me if I'm mistaken, is to say that uh, the purpose of machines is to build something. And I think that what we realized here together is that um, just having, we, we need to have the product, the house, the whatever you do with the machine so that the machines can actually become useful. So this is feeding directly into open source ecology's mission by creating the other half of the equation, which is right. what do you do with yes. machines. It makes sense to me. I don't have much use for a brick press unless I'm building a house. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so exactly right. Um, no, I think it, it does seem to feed into each other quite naturally. And it comes from your own biography, really. Your example is, is the, the, the living, breathing example of exactly why this is necessary and why it's important. So... I think a lot of my listeners will probably already understand the the process here, the implications of this, why it's so important and such a, an incredible resource once this gets developed to be able to download the tools that you build and then download the house and, you know, play around with it and build a house. I mean, it's an incredible dream to see that realized. But for people who need to see this in a more visual form, need to see what's happening, where can they go for more information about this and start putting this uh, together on the, on the screen for themselves? Well, we, we have a, a website. It's openbuildinginstitute.org. Uh, the library itself is there, so you can download it right now. There are images and descriptions of all the examples. This is very much work in progress. I mean, again, it's an open source project. We're relying on everyone joining us to actually get this to the next level. Um, so that's what a lot of information is. You also use a lot of social media. Uh, Facebook for open source ecology is where we post most of our updates. Yeah. And yeah. tell us about the library. What's in the library? Doors, windows, yeah. flooring, roofing? What else? Right. So we work with a more or less basic dimension, though things could have different dimensions. Say we, we call a wall module is a four by eight panel that you build and you install on site and then you add another one next to it and so on and so forth. So you end up having a wall. Same thing with roof. Of course, they're a little bigger. Uh, so basically what they are is exactly that. They're wall Think Lego, think um, erector set. So you have all of these pieces and then you create them in a workshop or just outdoors in your garden and you assemble them to form a building. Yeah, to, to we arrived there, <laughs> we start building with panelized standard framing lumber in addition to the bricks. We found that the brick brick press, that's hard work, of course, the, the walls are, they weigh a ton for a four by eight section when they're one foot thick. So to make this really modular and feasible for this five-day build, we're mixing the two. It's a hybrid between the brick press, the brick, the compressed earth block, and regular panelized construction. But everything outside of the bricks, of course, is designed such that two people can readily handle that. So two people can actually lift the whole roof, roof module into place and so forth. And um, But as far as uh, there's a couple more elements in terms of people getting their hands on this and what's in it I mean, because not, not everybody can build or is interested in getting into mm -hmm. this for people who might not have the time or interest so we're also creating a training program for builders which we're starting next year with a six month immersion such that you can hire an OBI trade, trained builder 
wherever you are to get a house built just like you you would have a realistic option from for the McMansion here's one for the the grow home yeah <laughs> yeah no that's I think that's an incredibly important step in this because although it would be wonderful to build your own house uh, not everyone does have the time or the ability to do that so if uh, if there's people who can make a model of some sort of, sort of business enterprise model out of this again that's just helping to spread uh, spread the information and spread the usefulness of it so for people who are interested in this um you said there's a 20-year roadmap for the open source ecology project what is the roadmap for open building institute you? No. <laughs> well, I mean, the immediate steps right now are the builds in November. So that means doing all the technical due diligence to make sure all those ecological features are designed. The main goal for next year is the training program and then a further build at the end of next year. And now getting to the Living Building Challenge certification. Now, that is the highest standard for regenerative construction. We've got Bob Berkebeil who, who founded that, that concept on our board of advisors. So we, we focus a lot on really mm -hmm. solid advisors to get us there. So the goal for next year is the training program and maxing out the ecological features in a living building challenge compliant home. Then after that, it's continuing to, uh, we'll see where it takes from there. We can't really foretell, but we'd like to scale this training program because that's the only way we're going to get this out into the world um, because in an open source project like i said i thought that the stuff would go viral because it's open but it's it's really hard there's a lot of yeah. barriers uh, the integrated skill sets are are definitely missing so our, the clarity we've gained over the years is we have to make a very deliberate process for training others because outside out of our workshops nobody has really taken this on I mean, we thought that some people, some entrepreneurial people might just start up operations just like this and, and collaborate on new designs. But so, so far, <clears throat> that economic return, the, the feedback loop on economics has not happened, and we really want to address that. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this, uh, this kickoff, which, by the way, has the Kickstarter attached to that, which we're funding, getting some seed funding so to actually, run this program. Yeah, the, the seed, the, this funding the the that actually ties into your question, which is, so we have a two-year plan, and the broad idea is to, within two years, refine the system and, and work on the training. So that two years from now, we actually, this is ready for other people to take on without so, too much intervention from us. And the uh, Kickstarter is supposed to fund those in it, that, the initial R&D for those two years. Yeah, and starting with builds at other locations. Yeah. We know we can do that here. We know it takes a lot of skill. But next year we're aiming to go off-site because, by the way, we are really good here in terms of we don't have building codes. So we can experiment as we want. But now next year we're going to do our first build in a zoned environment. So the plan is to have four builds outside of our location so we can see how this starts rolling out into the mm -hmm. world. Yeah, uh, again, another step forward and uh, very exciting. And it's exciting to know that there are people behind this who have actually put a decent amount of thought into it and know what they're up against. I think that's, uh, that's comforting. So again, for people who want to get involved in this and or contribute to the Kickstarter, the first place to, for them to go would be openbuildinginstitute.org? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And from there, of course, they can also get links to open source ecology. They can get the Kickstarter link to the Open Building Institute see, uh, seed money Kickstarter. All of that information, of course, will also be in the show notes for this interview. Anything else you'd like to tell the audience before we go? Um, maybe just one thing that we're so deep in this that sometimes we forget the bigger pictures, uh, the bigger picture of why we're doing this. Um, we're really going for ecological housing without debt. Right. If we can, I mean, housing is one of the most important things in people's lives. If we can somehow, through open source and wide collaboration, solve that, um, I think we'll have done a big deal altogether to uh, make things better. Yeah, and one and talking about the scope of this, we haven't even touched on which we thought was a major, major component of this, and that is this Kickstarter is also funding the open source materials production facility. So under one roof, we're going to have compressed earth block production, lumber production, concrete made from burnt limestone, which is local, paint, and multi-wall polycarbonate glazing, which is 3D printed. So you can take scrap CDs, which are polycarbonate, you can extrude them through a 3D printer to make these big 
wall panels for the, the, the greenhouse. So that's, I mean, in terms of local materials, wherever you are, that would be amazing. And that, once again, is an open model. We are going to show how you produce bricks and how you can make money with that. That's a super valuable product. And if this replicates, then we can have a, a real option for local building makers <laughs> outside of just going to a big box store. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't download a house, would you? <laughs> this is, I mean, this is the nightmare of all the people who want to keep these types of things, the realm of a stratified few with the special access to the special technologies. And, oh, it, it must be only a special group of people that can do this. And you must pay through your nose and be in debt for the rest of your life in order to access a house. I mean, it is so important that we do work towards this goal and now we have the technology and the resources available to do it for the first time in human history to collaborate with each other across the entire planet instantaneously it is incredible it is an incredible time to be alive let's make the most of it openbuildinginstitute.org and opensourceecology.org mm -hmm. yes that's it all right once again the links will be in the show notes for all of those uh those resources very much looking forward to seeing this roadmap as it starts to come to completion. So I hope we can have you on again in the future for updates. Thank you again for your time, Katarina Moda and uh, Marcin Jakubowski. Thank you again. Thank, thank you, you so James. much, James, and everyone watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Corbett Report is brought to you by The Corbett Report subscriber. A weekly newsletter featuring James Corbett's International Forecaster Editorial, recommended reading and viewing, discounts on Corbett Report DVDs and once a month a subscriber only video sign up today to start receiving your copy at corbettreport.com support